Hello everyone. Today we will study measurement and scaling techniques used in research methodology. The most widely used classification of measurement scale are nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale and ratio scale. So first of all we will look after nominal scale. It is simply a system of assigning number symbols to event in order to label them. Nominal scale is the least powerful level of the measurement which indicate no order and no distance relationship. There is no arithmetic origin. It simply describes difference between things by assigning them to categories. So nominal data is just a counted data. Here mode is used as a measure of central tendency. Measure of dispersion is not generally used in the nominal scale and chi-square test is the most common statistical significance that can be utilized for measure of correlation. So this type of data is having less power. Second scale is ordinal scale. The lowest level of ordered scale that is commonly new, known as ordinal scale. It places the events in order, but there is no attempt to make the interval of the scale equal in terms of some rule. Best example is the rank order. Rank order represents the ordinal scale such that the data is arranged from the highest to the lowest or from the lowest to the highest. There is no absolute value. This scale is frequently used. Median, quartile, percentile, correlation and other non-parametric test of significance are used on such ordinal scales. Third scale is interval scale. Interval scale where there is an arbitrary zero means not possible to determine the absolute zero. It cannot measure the complete absence of a trait. Example Fahrenheit scale. For example, if the temperature of the room is 30 to 40 and in another room the temperature is increased from 60 to 70. But one cannot say that the temperature 60 is twice as warm as temperature 30. So in this way we cannot say the there is an arbitrary zero. So there is no absolute zero here. 0 is a arbitrary point. Here mean, standard deviation, t-test and f-test are most commonly used. This is the more powerful scale than other two scales. Last scale is ratio scale. Ratio scale is having the absolute 0 or true measurement of 0. 0 point on a centimeter indicate complete absence. Here, comparison is possible. For example, persons say typing speed is twice as good as typing speed of person B. Here, all statistical techniques can be used. Multiplication, division, geometric mean and harmonic mean are commonly applied to the ratio scale. One thing that is to be noted here is physical sciences use ratio scale whereas behavioral sciences uses interval or less precise scales. So ratio scale is the most precise scale and nominal scale is the least precise scale. So these are the four types of measurement scales. Now we will see after test of sound measurement. There are three categories of sound measurement. Test of validity, test of reliability, and test of practicality. So we will study these tests one by one. First is the test of validity. Validity is the most critical criterion that indicate the degree to which an instrument measure what it is supposed to measure. So validity can be thought of a utility. In other words, we can say validity is the extent to which the differences found with measuring instrument reflect two difference among those being tested. It is of three types, 
content validity, construct validity and criteria related validity. Content validity means measuring instrument provide adequate coverage of the topic under study. Construct validity is the degree to which scores on the test can be accounted by the explanatory construct of a sound theory. Third is criterion related validity. It is the ability to predict some outcome. It is of two types, predictive as well as concurrent. Predictive means that it is useful to predict future. Whereas concurrent validity means the test should measure other measures of the research. Here are some quality of criterions. First, relevance means it should provide a proper measure. Freedom from the biasness. Reliability means a reliable criteria is stable or reproducible. Fourth is the availability. The information specified by the criteria must be available. So in this way, test of validity take place. Second is test of reliability. It is the another important test. A measuring instrument is said to be reliable if it provides consistent results. Reliable measuring instrument does contribute to validity. But a reliable instrument need not to be a valid instrument. For example, a scale consistently overweighs an object by 5 kg is a reliable scale, but it is not a valid scale. So we can say valid instrument is always reliable. Stability and equivalence are the two important aspect of the reliability. Stability means consistent result. Whereas equivalence means how much error but two different investigator or different samples are there. Means the equivalent aspect consider how much error may get introduced by different investigators or different samples of the item being studied. A good way to test for the equivalence of measurement by two investigator is to compare their observation of the same event. So reliability can be improved by standardizing the conditions under which measurement take place. And second one is by carefully designing direction for the measurement with no variation from group to group by using trained and motivated person to conduct the research. So this is the test of reliability. Third is test of practicality. The practicality characteristics of a measuring instrument can be judged in terms of economy, convenience and interpretability. When there is a trade-off between the ideal research project with the affordable budget then it is called economy. When it is easy to administer the whole project then it is called convenience and the result can be interpreted easily then it is called interpretability. So these are the three important aspects of practicality. So in this way, there are three important tests of sound measurement. I hope you all are able to understand now what are the different scaling and measurement techniques. So we had studied four scales and three tests of sound measurement. Thank you so much for today.